So far in this series, you've learned about debits and credits, the five account types and their nature, and how to use T-accounts. You also looked at a few typical business transactions and figured out where to post the debits and credits into your set of accounts. You may not have realized it at the time, but while you were doing that, you were actually using the double entry accounting system. That's right, you already know more about double entry accounting than you think. If you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, I recommend you do. Then come back and watch this video to round out what you've learned and fully understand the principles of double entry accounting. Because once you do, you can go on to easily learn all kinds of things about accounting and bookkeeping to help you in your business. So with that in mind, let's go over what you've learned so far and really get to grips with the double entry accounting system. The double entry accounting system is a bit like Isaac Newton's third law of physics. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you push on a door, the door will swing on its hinges with the exact same force you use to push it. This is an equal and opposite reaction. Likewise, and as you learned earlier in this series, in a set of accounts, if you enter a debit, you must also enter a credit of the same value. This is one of the building blocks of double entry accounting, and there's no way around it. When a transaction happens in your business, the total value of its debits must equal the total value of its credits. This rule applies to all transactions, whether they require two, four, 100, or any other number of entries into your set of accounts. Debits must equal credits. It's the basis of double entry accounting. After getting to grips with debits and credits, you learned about the five account types and their nature. This principle is also a vital part of double entry accounting because it helps you to figure out which entries into your set of accounts should be debits and which ones should be credits. Then to help map out the entries you need to make into your accounts for a transaction, you learned how to use T accounts. By using T accounts, you can really see the double entry accounting system at work. If you enter a debit amount in one T account, you must also enter a credit amount in another T account. And no matter how complicated the transaction or how many debit and credit entries you need to make, the total value of the debits will always equal the total value of the credits. This, once again, is the basis of double entry accounting. So there you have it. By watching all the videos in this series, you have learned about the double entry accounting system and how to use it in your business accounts. By understanding this, you will be able to better understand what goes on in your business's accounts, which will help you to run a successful business. For more videos on accounting and bookkeeping for business, check out our channel and don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.